Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I will be showing off uh, Grossi. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it's pretty much a stock management system for your home um, when it comes to like your food um, and like planning recipes and meal plans and tracking tasks and all this cool stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is pretty much show you an up and running instance that I have running and then I'm going to scrap it pull it all down and then create it all back up in docker um, and i'll show you those steps on how you can get it started so this is my up and running uh instance of grocery but i don't have actually anything in here so since i really don't have much in my own up and running one at the moment it's great to be able to show it off by using the demo that grocery actually provides the link will be in the description as well so if we just click demo here it will take us into one that actually has some good data in it that we can actually look at it, right? Because otherwise, if I'm just showing you some empty grossy, uh, it's not really going to be able to show off what it can actually do. So as you can see here, there's some in the top left here, we have stock overview, and you can kind of see what you've already have and what you are out of. So you can see here that the amount, uh, we're out of cookies, chocolate, gummy bears, crisps, and stepper, um, but we have four packs of cherry tomatoes. Now, if we come down to shopping list, and we can see here that we've got a few things that we uh, need to get. So, um, you know, there's the sweets on there, um, refrigerated products, all this cool stuff that we can add. And the cool thing is, say if you have some products in your stock that are um, expired, what you can actually do is come to the top right. Let me zoom in. And you can add all overdue expired products to the shopping list just like that. Um, and all these other cool little functions at the top. Another great thing is the recipes. So if we come down here, you can see that uh, based on our stock levels, we know that we can actually make cheese on toast, <laughs> uh, but we don't have enough to make any of the other things. So this is cool. So if someone's, you're thinking, oh, I really want to make, you know, some pancakes. Oh, far on, we don't have enough to make this. Why, what don't we have? You can click on the pancakes, scroll down, and you go, oh, okay, we don't have enough eggs. Uh, we're actually completely out of eggs. We have, um, you know, we're missing four. We don't have any on the shopping list. We should probably add some. Same with flour and sugar. So that's a great thing about the uh, recipe side of things. Now, if we come down to meal plan, uh, you can see that based off of our recipes that we have, we can add things to our meal plan. Uh, so if I click add up here and come down, based on the recipes I have selected then i'm able to add these to a meal plan uh so you know i'm gonna have chocolate sauce for dinner on a wednesday um and there we go it's added um so that's the meal plan if we come down to chores overview you can see that we've got some things we need to do um and that you can you know you can add and you can see when chores are kind of due and whatnot and a similar thing uh for tasks where you're just adding in things that you need to do uh, batteries so if you've got some batteries and uh, remotes that you know need to be charged at certain times this is the best time to do it and equipment might you might have at home um, say for your dishwasher you wanted to scan in some notes from the manual you could do it all here so you have them on hand your general calendar which is just you know your calendar uh, so as in your meal plans and just anything else um, that you've added in like tasks and whatnot purchase so this is a great thing here this is how you actually add items into your uh, your your stock so down here if i click on the down we can see i can add any one of these um so say if i've just gone out and i've brought some noodles i can click on that and i've brought uh you know five packs of these um and the expiry date let's say is uh you know next week 31st and then yep we brought it from Kroger's sure that's fine or Walmart and it will be stored in the pantry and I hit OK and we've just added five packs of noodles and the other cool thing about this is there's actually a scanner so you, you can actually uh, say if you wanted to scan a lot of things in by the barcode you can plug in a scanner and you can scan the barcode you just click the top here and you just scan everything in via its barcode rather than typing out the name uh, that is an option Coming down to consume, so this is where you start ticking things off saying you have used them. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, that one. So this is where you're moving things. So say if I'm moving something from uh, the fridge and I'm going to move it into the freezer just because I need it you know, uh, for longer term, uh, you can do that. Here's an, an inventory thing. So again, this is just adding more into your inventory. And then you've got chore tracking. Uh, so this here is, if I come down here, uh, based on the chores that you have you can say you know lawn mode in the garden click here and you can this is where you start ticking things off saying you have done those chores 
Again, battery tracking. This is where you can say, you know, it's been charged or whatnot. And then you've got down here the manage master data. So this is where you actually, because when you get your uh, grocery, which I'll show you after we've gone through the install process, this is all going to be empty. So you're going to have to add in all your products um, for you. Uh, and then you can start adding in the stock levels and everything like that uh, at the top. But that's pretty much grossy. Uh, enough of talking. How about I start showing you how to get this set up for yourself? So like most of the Docker containers I run, I use images from linuxserver.io because they have a really good range of images as well as that they generally support the ARM architecture and I run a lot of my stuff on the Raspberry Pi. So yeah, this is a good one. I'll leave a link in the description to this page. Uh, all we really care about is scrolling down and grabbing this Docker compose file because this will create our grossy Docker container. So it's pretty simple. All you need to do is go to your server and once you're in your server, we will create a folder to store this Docker compose file. So on my server, what you can see here is that I actually have a folder for all of the applications I run. So here you can see I have AirSonic, Bitwarden, Bookstack, and then Grossy. So just make sure that you have a folder named Grossy and a location where you want to store this and we'll change directory into Grossy. And if we list it here, you can see that I have two folders and I want you to do the same thing. Sorry, one folder and one file. Uh, create a folder called config and we're then going to create a file called docker-compose.yaml. So creating the file was easy. It was just putting nano and then docker-compose, uh, so docker-compose.yaml and hit enter. And what you were doing is if we go back to the Linux server page, we were pretty much cra grabbing this, right? You copy this over, come back to the server and paste it in. Now you'll see that all there's pretty much only two things you need to worry about changing here is your time zone. So I changed mine to Pacific Auckland and the this side um, to the directory that is on my server, right? So again, if I close down here, just keep in mind this directory here so it's forward slash mount grossy config so as you can see here forward slash mount grossy i do an ls config so i'll be storing the config for my docker container in this folder here so if i change directory into my config file i don't have anything in here um, and that's how you should be and now if we change directory back once you've got your do uh, docker compose file all set up so once you've got your uh, docker comp compose file all set up so let's just go back into it uh, so again, you're just pasting in that command from Linux server IO, changing this to your directory and changing this to your time zone. Uh, and then you just save it. Uh, if you're using nano, it's just control O, enter, and then control X. And then what we're going to do once we have that up and running, uh, well, our docker compose file there, we can just run sudo docker compose up hyphen D. The commands for all of this will be in the description as well. And then all we have to do is hit enter. And now this will be creating our grossy container. Uh, yours might have a bit more to it if you don't have the container image already downloaded. So you might have to just wait a little bit. And now essentially what we can do is go to the IP address of our server on the port that was specified in our Docker compose file. So in our Docker compose file, you can see that we're running this on port 9283. So don't worry if you see this straight away when you go into it because it does take a while to start up. Now I'm using Portana generally to man, uh, watch my log. So we'll quickly go into Portana and we can just watch what the container is doing. So here in Portana, we can see uh, the logs for the container and I'm pretty much just gonna watch this until I see a uh, complete done. Also, if you're not using Portana, you can just use this command here, which is sudo docker logs, uh, the name of the container and then hyphen F for follow. And we hit enter and we can just watch the logs in the terminal. Like I was saying before, this does take a while to stand up. So yeah, we're just waiting for a pretty much a done message and then we should be able to connect to our container. And there we go, we have our done message. So we should be able to go back to the IP address and the port number um, in our web browser to be able to connect to Grossy. So back to this site can't be reached and we'll hit F5 for refresh. And there we go, we are now seeing the Grossy login page. Now just a little FYI, if you've tried to connect and you just get like a blank page or something, try a different web browser or uh, clear your cache. I had the, a similar thing happen and then all of a sudden it started working. Uh, but anyway, the cre default credentials is just admin and then admin and we hit OK. And now you are in your own up and running grocery container. That's how easy it is. And then it's just a matter of going through and setting your grocery environment up. So you come in and add all your master data. So it would pretty much just be like a process of 
when you go out shopping and you've found like a new category of item just make sure it's in the manage master data um, section here where you add all the categories and then when you start adding things it's all here but that's pretty much how to set up Grocy. Um, I hope you enjoy the app it seems like a really cool thing that I'll be incorporating into my self-hosted applications as well um, but yeah thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye